Hey, what's going on? I want to talk to you in this video about like the bad side of DevOps because if you're just getting started in DevOps, you know, I think it's important for you to have the pros and the positive aspects of DevOps and like the cool things about it, but also know like what's the downsides to it before you make that career decision. Or if you're already working in DevOps, then this video will just serve as a long distance YouTube hug to let you know that you're not the only one working on things like this stupid piece of shit. Hey, what's up? I'm Will from DevOps for Developers. And in this video, I wanna talk about like some of the things that are frustrating about DevOps, just, you know, so that you have that information before you make any decisions. And this week has been a perfect example of one of those instances that I thought was worth sharing with you. So for me, one of the most frustrating aspects of DevOps is a lot of things are done on a really slow iteration cycle. For example, this week, I was just gonna deploy this one consumer for a message queue. And throughout my career, I've learned that anytime I use the words just or simply, like mother nature, fate, and karma all tag up to beat me down and make sure that I regret ever uttering those words. And that's exactly what happened this week. So I've got this environment that I'm working in and we have this Node.js API that sends message out to a message queue. We've got these Python consumers that pick up those messages. All of this runs in Kubernetes. So we have ingress routes that we have to deal with and SSL certs, and then there's some shared network volumes between these different microservices. And all of that stuff creates this pretty complex environment that's typical of what you see a lot of times with microservices. And so the thing is, oftentimes it's really, really difficult or not even possible at all to build this out in a local development environment where the software team or the software engineering team can run everything locally. So sometimes it's not until you deploy this out to your staging environment that you see the failures between these microservices. So in addition to that, making these changes can be a slow process. For example, I made some changes to the code that went through the pull review process, got merged in, which triggered the build, built a Docker container or a Docker image that gets deployed out to Kubernetes. Kubernetes relaunches the environment and all of that takes time. So went through that whole process only to discover that the message format used by the API was different than the message format that was being used by one of the consumers, which led to an error message causing the thing to blow up, leading me to go back to make more changes to the code and start that whole iterative cycle all over again, which leads to a lot of time sitting around and whenever I have time sitting around, I get bored, start doing really weird stuff. That kind of thing. It also leads to frustration because you're like, holy sh dude, I just want this deployed, but it doesn't work like that. So now that leads me to the frustrating part is you've got this one simple change that you wanna make, but then it takes so long to get that change out into an environment where you can see it. And that leads to frustration for me. So there's, this is where the whole point of this video comes in. There's a couple of things there. One is I need to take a step back and figure out why I have to go through that entire process before I can see the end results. The answer to that is I need to increase or build out the components needed to be able to run and test this end to end locally and make sure that that's in a reproducible state because I'm not the only one who's going to be struggling with this as this application gets further developed. The other part of that is to just acknowledge that this is actually a really good problem to have, right? Because that's kind of why I'm getting paid. And like, it's a really cool thing. Like I could be a roofer who lives in Arizona and is carrying shingles up to the roof of a house when it's 110 outside. Or I could be a guy who works for the public works department in Chicago whenever it's 40 below and you're out dealing with busted frozen pipes. So these are good problems to have. And I think that's important for me is to keep perspective on all of this. That like, even though it may be frustrating, I'm doing something that I do enjoy doing most of the time. I'm getting paid really well for it. 
And in solving this problem, I'm actually not just solving this problem for myself, but taking the time to solve this problem so that no one else experiences it is going to lead to exponential time savings for every single developer who comes along to work on this application in the future for years to come. So without a doubt, these slow iteration cycles and the feedback, the time it takes to get through that feedback loop is definitely frustrating. But in identifying and solving that problem, I'm actually solving it for people, for more people than myself. And that's kind of, um, that's kind of like the thing about DevOps or one of the things about DevOps is by taking this frustrating part uh, into DevOps and figuring out a solution to it, we're actually taking that problem away from the developers or the software engineers who work on the team that makes their it gives them the ability to focus and be more efficient in writing the code that they need to write without having to deal with that frustration, which allows us to get code to production more quickly, deliver more features, fix more bugs, make our customers happier. And so that is the part of DevOps, but it's actually a really good problem to have. And um, hope you found that helpful. If you have any thoughts on that, leave me some comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see y'all in the next video.